Hey, what's up, guys? John here from the Reaper blog. And what you've just seen here is uh, what we call macro controls. So we're using one control to affect multiple parameters of a plugin. We're using Reaper's parameter modulation to make that, uh, that link and to control the amount of each one. So in this drum loop, um, I've got just an EQ on it. The first band has its frequency linked to macro control one, band two, is a peaking filter and it has its gain set to uh, macro control one and the low pass on band three has its frequency um, linked so when i turn up macro one is moving the frequency of the high and low pass filters and it's giving a boost in the mid-range and this plugin i'm going to put it in repack so everyone can get it but i'll just show you my code because it's incredibly simple it doesn't pass any audio it doesn't affect your MIDI in any way. All it does is give you some sliders that you can link to other plugins. Let's look at how this is actually set up. We'll start with band one and the frequency. So you just touch the parameter, go to parameter menu at the top of the plugin window, click on parameter modulation MIDI link. It'll bring up the configuration for that. And we've got uh, enabled parameter modulation. You can set the starting point. And with this one, I want it to fade up. So I'm using it at uh, zero here. In the link from MIDI controller, you select the macro control JS effect. So I have it on number one. Using the scale amount, we can change this so that as I turn up macro one, it doesn't go up so far. And by inverting this, you can have it move in a different direction. So if I have this set at scale minus 100 and I had the starting position up at the top, as I move this, it's going to slide that over. Not quite what I want when I have uh, multiple parameters here, but let's just turn those off and see how that looks. So kind of reverse the direction of it. So put that back, enable band three and two. So band two, that was the gain, so I'll just click on that, open up that parameter modulation window again for this one. And this time I have the baseline position in the middle. And we can adjust this so that uh, you know, our starting point, when we have the macro at zero, what position is that going to be? So we can have it starting at minus three and just have a look in the plugin parameters to see what that setting is. We can have it at minus six and as we turn this up, it goes up. Something like that. You don't have to make this effect. There, we'll go through some other examples later. Uh, so offset at zero, and I have the scale at uh, 59. So I don't want it to go up as far as it can. It'll get pretty loud. You know, something like 50% on band two. And the last one, I've got it on frequency for band three. This one's pretty much the same as uh, the first band, but with opposite settings. So the high pass starts with a, with the frequency at zero, and the low pass starts with a frequency at 24K. And in the scale, I have it reversed. Let's see what actually happens if we reverse that. So when it's at zero, it's not really gonna let anything through. And then it we can kind of sweep a filter. One of the benefits of doing it like this, once we get this all set up, it's just one parameter to automate, and it'll do all of these things for us. So let's look at some other examples. Let's do a distortion, like the uh, air lo-fi. Let's put in repitch, and we'll also put in some reverb. So first of all, let's just see if we can get an interesting sound. Okay, so I think that as I increase macro one knob, it's going to uh, turn up the mix, but then I will turn, uh, turn down the sample rate.
just as an example of what you can do. Okay, so it'll end up there, I guess. Uh, pitch will take the semitones full range, I think. Sure. So let's take the parameter, the last touch that. So I'm going to parameter mod link. This will link to the macro controller and we'll do it on macro one. And we will set this to uh, the middle. So it's starting at zero semitones. And I'll set this scale, let's do 50%. All right. So that's our first control. And so that looks like this. It's going to increase the pitch as we move that knob. All right. So we're going to the reverb. So uh, parameter modulation link. And we want this to start at about here. We'll link to controller. And we'll start this uh, there. And we want this to go all the way up. So it's going to start at about 23%. And now I should point out that this directly controls this knob right now. And that's going to be setting our basically our minimum value if we have the scale at the positive side. And it will set the uh, the maximum if we are doing it the other way. So yeah, so if I turn this up, 100%, it's now 100%, and it's at plus 24. So it does hit 100% a little bit early because we're starting here. So maybe we can scale this back a little bit, and yeah. That makes sense. So if we're we're like 25% um, strength to begin with, when we put this at 100, then we would need this at 75. Makes sense. So we'll close that one, and we'll go back to the Air Lo-Fi plugin. And we want this to go from 50k down to about, I don't know, 4. Parameter mod, link, and we'll go uh, from the top, link to parameter, macro control one, and we'll set the scale to about half. Turn this up. Oh, I know what it is. I need to reverse this. That's what it was. I want to go in the opposite direction. Yeah, that will work. <laughs> A bit of trial and error, especially if you're tired need that second coffee. Um, and bit depth, we'll change that. So it's going to this button. And we want that at 100. Link to macro control one. And you can do as many parameters as you want. Let's see. Yeah, let's go down to seven bit. Just one more, guys. I'll start that at minimum link and going to scale this a little bit. I don't want it to go all the way up. Yeah, 11 dB. All right, let's hear that. So that's all linked to one parameter. And now if I wanted to automate that, set this track to, we can do it in touch mode. And I'll just move this parameter and you'll see uh, instead of all of those envelopes popping up, it should just be this macro one parameter. Okay, so now take that out of latch mode, and we'll go into trim or read mode. There's so many things you can do with this in an actual project. I'm kind of just showing you like how to set it up, but just anything you want to change over time 
with relationship to something else. I've set this plugin up so that there are five macro controls. I mean, you can use one of these on each track. You could try this on your master bus to uh, do some crazy effects or maybe something in parallel. Once this is all set up and if you like the results, you can just save this as an effects chain. Save all effects as a chain. And we can just call this uh, macro pitch verb, I guess you could call it. And now on a new track, just close all of these plugin windows. On a new track, we can go to the effects button, click on effects chains. Where's my macro pitch verb? And there are all my plugins popped up and my macro controller is linked to that. I'm gonna bring this audio over here, see if this works. Yeah, so all of those parameter links that we've set up, which took a long time, I know, uh, but now that it's saved with the effects chain, you don't need to do it again. Um, and if you want to tweak anything, you can just wiggle that knob, go to parameter modulation, and see what its settings are. You can change the scale, change the baseline, any of those things. So there you go, guys. Macro controls in Reaper. It's actually pretty simple. Um, there's a lot of flexibility there with the parameter modulation window. There are other ways to do this. I think this is actually the simplest way. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.